We hope you enjoyed that one. That's a song by the great Django Reinhardt. And he, he, was, a, he was an amazing composer. I mean, for someone who, uh, who came as early in the jazz tradition as he did, he, he really, um, I, think, I think he had a lot of French Impressionism in his ears, you know? He had all of these, uh, you know, sharp 11 chords and dominant chords, non-sequential harmony things going on that um, really, really set him apart from other composers of his day. And so that, I, I, I always think of that song as a dream, you know, that has a chase scene in it. It, it has this kind of uh, rude awakening. And then at the end, all of a sudden, you're back to snoring. You know, it's, it's a beautiful one. So um, this, is a great, uh, this is a great opportunity for us tonight because we're joined by Harry Diplock and Kurosh Kanani, who um, if, if you had a chance to visit the old Kansas Smitty's bar, um, you will have seen their faces and their names a lot. And we've definitely missed them. So thanks for coming, guys. It's a, it's a real treat. This is a special kind of music to play, especially, well, I mean, for me, um, because it, um, in a lot of ways, you know, in the same way that uh, football is the best, not American football, but um, soccer, um, you know, it's kind of one of the best games ever because all you need is a ball and you're ready to play. Gypsy jazz is, or Django's music, um, is a special kind of jazz in which all you really need is whatever you've got, you know, and you can play it anywhere with no electricity. You don't even have to, you don't have to have an audience. <laughs> <laughs> That's true of all jazz, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, the kind of music that I've played everywhere from, you know, on boats and trains and um, planes and in fields and everywhere. And so it, it has a lot of, um, I have a lot of fond memories uh, around it. So it's a pleasure to be doing this. We're going to continue on with a tune that actually was um, played by Fletcher Henderson that Django covered. This is called Blue Lou. What key do we play it in? Thank you. 
that, um, how about just one of those things? Actually, how about you guys do it? I'm going to, oh. This is fun. So that was a song called Brazil. And, um, yeah, my housemate had that on vinyl when I first moved to Montreal, Hans. What a guy. Um, and uh, it was kind of the first time that I'd heard clarinet played in a jazz setting and not be kind of a Benny Goodman um, kind of emulation. And I was, I was kind of shocked by that. And it really had a big influence on me, that, that recording of Brazil. And um, so it's kind of etched in my memory as, as something really nice. Um, if you haven't heard it, check it out. It's, it's very evocative. And I kind of got into the early jazz styles on clarinet through um, Django's music because he, he basically used clarinet um, because his violin player had moved to England. <laughs> so, um, well, that's what the clarinet's for. Um, we're going to continue on and, and feature our amazing guitar players, uh, Kurosh and Harry. Kurosh. Um, they're going to play a beautiful rendition of Danse Norvégienne with extra salmon and extra capers. Thank you. 
One, two, uh, uh.
Ferg Ireland, delivering the impossible. A bass solo on Flesh Door. I never thought I'd see it. That was beautiful. It's beautiful. Thanks for coming to Kansas Smitty's tonight. We hope you're enjoying yourselves at home. And uh, we hope you, uh, as Jack said, you can support what we're doing by checking those links below. It really helps us out. Uh, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and you'll know when we're going live, which is every Tuesday through Saturday at 8 p.m. We have some great stuff coming up in the program, um, so check it out. Uh, you're listening to Kurosh Kanani and Harry Diplock on guitars. And um, I think we'll play, uh, this is a, a Django, well, this is, a, this is kind of the, you know, if you're a musician, you know that there, 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 are, there, are, there are strings of, of, of like, uh, or levels of jam session tunes, right? Like bass level, bottom is like summertime, autumn leaves, that's where you start. And then you graduate to things like, you know, there will, be, there will never be another you, all the things you are. This is kind of like a fourth or fifth tier Django jam session tune. It's one of those ones that you call to impress the people around you. This is called C2 Save. <laughs>
<laughs> Viper's dream or Peter Ferg? Let's do Viper's Dream. Let's do Viper's Dream. As you may have heard, this next one is entitled Viper's Dream.
Just one of those things. Or you want to do just fun? Just one of those fun. Yeah. Sea blues, isn't it? We are um, <laughs> we're rounding out this hour. It's flown by as, uh, as the best jam sessions do. So we want to thank you for tuning in. And we want to thank um, Harry and Kurosh and Ferg for coming together and, and doing this great music. Um, these are some of the lesser played Django repertoire, so we, we thought we'd um, obscure. obscure. We thought we'd challenge challenge ourselves and challenge you. If you're a Django fan at home, and you're going, are they going to play minor swing? Well, no, we're not. <laughs> but it's okay because the record's better than whatever we would do anyway. But we are going to play uh, a song that Django played and one that we really love called "Just One of Those Things." We hope you enjoy "Just One of Those Things." Uh, uh, uh. 
yeah.